Welcome to this annotated anatomy video that's going to outline the perineal pouches. Now before we look at the perineal pouches, we need to be familiar with the boundaries of the perineum. Now on the screen at the moment is the image of the bony pelvis and the pelvic diaphragm. So here we have puborectalis, pubococcygeus and ischiococcygeus that make levator ani. Here we have coccygeus and here we have piriformis. Notice how the muscles of levator ani converge in the midline and there's those two defects, the urogenital hiatus and the anal hiatus that allows the urethra, regina and rectum slash anus to pass through the perineal diaphragm, leave the pelvis and enter the perineum. Now to look at the perineum, that shallow space that sits inferior to this pelvic diaphragm, I'm going to remove this layer of muscles so we can just have the urethra, regina and rectum in position. But look at the boundaries of the perineum. So anteriorly we have the pubic symphysis and the two pubic bones. We then have the inferior pubic rami, ischial tuberosities and the coccyx. Before we look at the boundaries of the perineum we need to add an additional structure and that is the sacrotuberous ligament. We have two sacrotuberous ligaments that run from the ischial tuberosity to the sacrum. So I'll just draw these in here. So the sacrotuberous ligaments. The sacrotuberous ligaments are important as they enable the perineum to assume a diamond shape. So we can draw this diamond shape of the perineum starting from the pubic symphysis anteriorly and then going lateral to the ischial tuberosities following the sacrotuberous ligament towards the coccyx and then we can repeat those steps back to ischial tuberosity and then back to the pubic symphysis and here we have that diamond shaped perineum passing through from the pelvis to the perineum is the urethra regina in the female and the rectum we can further divide this perineum into two triangles by drawing a transverse or horizontal line between the two ischial tuberosities. And here we can now see we have an anterior urogenital triangle. Urogenital triangle as it contains both the urethra and the vagina and also an anal triangle as it obviously contains the anus. lying over the urogenital triangle is a thin membranous layer that's known as the perineal membrane. So I'll draw the perineal membrane in here. So the perineal membrane lines the urogenital triangle. It's like a shelf that's been wedged in position. It actually does come from the ischiopubic rami here. And it's a shelf-like structure that's wedged in between the two ischiopubic rami and it extends posteriorly to the ischial tuberosities. So these blue scratchy lines here resemble the perineal membrane. Importantly, this perineal membrane does not exist over the anal triangle. So in order to appreciate the perineal pouches, we need to be familiar with the location of the perineal membrane in a coronal section. Because lying superior to the perineal membrane is the deep perineal pouch and lying inferior to the perineal membrane is the superficial perineal pouch. So what we need to do is look at the perineum in a coronal section and to do that we're going to make our coronal slice through the urethra. So if we start by having our slice going through the superior pubic rami here, then the obturator foramen, inferior pubic rami, we then go across the urogenital triangle through the region of the urethra to then go back across inferior pubic rami, obturator foramen and superior pubic rami. So this is our coronal plane that we're going to have a look at. And then to look at the perineum in coronal section, if we just move the screen upwards, then we can see here we have our two superior pubic rami here and we have another one on the other side, superior pubic rami and we obviously have the inferior pubic rami. Running between these two rami is the obturator foramen that contains the obturator muscles. We have obturator externus laterally and obturator internus medially. We also need to add that thickening of the obturator fascia that creates the tenderness arch. 
So we can just draw that in here. Obviously we're cutting through them, so we're looking at the cross section of the tenderness arch. And coming from the tenderness arch, we have the levator ani muscles. And we can see these levator ani muscles coursing inframedially from the tenderness arch to converge in the midline. So here we have our levator ani muscles. Importantly though, because our coronal section went across the urethra, here we have part of the urogenital hiatus that allowed the urethra to pass from the pelvis into the perineum. So if we draw the urethra in, we can see the urethra is now passing through the urogenital hiatus between the two sides of levator ani muscle. Obviously surrounding the urethra sitting on top of levator ani is the prostate gland with the prostatic urethra running through it. So here we have the prostate gland and sitting on top of the prostate at the origin of the urethra is going to be the bladder. So here we have the bladder, prostate and the urethra passing through the urogenital hiatus. In order to appreciate the perineal pouches, we need to add in the perineal membrane. Remember the perineal membrane is sitting inferior to levator ani. It originates from the inferior pubic rami to converge in the midline where there's a small aperture that allows the urethra to pass through. So here we have our perineal membrane. And what we've created is this space that's bounded on these three sides. Superiorly, we have levator ani. Laterally, we have obturator internus muscle. And inferiorly, we have the perineal membrane. And this space on either side of the urethra is your deep perineal pouch. So we have these deep perineal pouches that are sitting superior to the perineal membrane. Importantly, I'll go over these boundaries once again. Superiorly, we have levator ani muscle. Laterally, we have obturator internus. And inferiorly, we have the perineal membrane. Now, when you're studying the deep perineal pouch, you've probably come across the urogenital diaphragm. The urogenital diaphragm. Now, the urogenital diaphragm is found within the deep perineal pouch, and it sits immediately above the perineal membrane. So here we have the urogenital diaphragm. The urogenital diaphragm, just like the pelvic diaphragm of levator A9 and coccygeus, is a muscular diaphragm and it helps to form the external urethral sphincter. So here we have the external urethral sphincter that surrounds the urethra inferior to the prostate. The urogenital diaphragm is this piece this disc-shaped piece of skeletal muscle that sits directly above the perineal membrane and is found within the deep perineal pouch. It's important in regulating the flow of urine through the urethra. It's supplied, as it's a skeletal muscle, it's supplied by the somatic nervous system, specifically the pudendal nerve. So the deep perineal pouch is bounded superiorly by levator ani muscle, laterally by obturator internus, inferiorly by the perineal membrane, and contains the urogenital diaphragm, which helps to form the external urethral sphincter.